my students so this is a mock exam for cima ba 2 paper there are 60 questions that you are answering in 2 hours in this video i'll be discussing the first 30 questions that i have given in the mock exam fixed costs are conventionally deemed to be fixed cost means you know it's in total it is constant if it is a unit value it decreases constant in total when production volume changes option b to one option b q2 based on the data below what is the amount of overhead under over absorption uh, let me copy this data <clears throat> budget budget actual actual so oar is going to be 493 200 divided by 10 960 45 absorbed overhead will be 10 4, 493 into 45 Compare this with actual overhead. 514157. Subtract it. Minus answer, it is under absorption. 41,972 under absorption. You have an option. Option D. Option D. Next. The mean number of employees absent during last week was calculated at 4.2. The number of employees absent during the first four days were 5, 3, 2 and 6. <coughs> Sorry. How many were absent on the fifth day? On the fifth day. So you can take, let's say, 5, 3, 2, 6. Let me take the last day as X. What they have given is mean mean is average right yeah so you can say 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus x divided by 5 is is uh, 4.2 16 plus x is 4.2 into 5 21 so x is 5 X is 5. Last day should have been 5. Which of the following statement about IRR or NPV methods uh, are correct? If the NPV of an investment at R percentage is positive, NPV will be negative at a rate of S percentage if S is less than R. No, you know, uh, you remember we studied a graph. What kind of graph? NPV on the y axis, cost of capital in the x axis, it's a downwards graph. It's actually a curve, but for analysis purposes, it's okay to assume that as a straight line. So, <clears throat> this is the point which is IRR, yeah, the point where it cuts the cost of capital axis. Now they say, if at R percentage, if it is positive, the NPV will be negative at a rate S percentage if S is less than R. So look at this, if R is here, S is going to have also positive NPV, right? Because if S is a lower percentage than R, obviously if R gives a positive NPV, S also will give a positive NPV. If you want, I can show you like this, see, if this is what is R percentage, yes, if that is what is R percentage, then S is going to be, as they said, S is lower, S is going to be here. Which should have even higher positive NPV, right? So it cannot be negative. It cannot be negative. First one is wrong. The graph of the net present value against discount rate has a negative slope. Yes. Yes. See, it's a negative slope. Discounting rate. And cost of capital are same. 
So it's a negatively sloped graph, correct? B is right. B is right. <coughs> An estimate of the internal rate of return requires calculation of the NPV at two different discount rate. Yes, you remember we take two points, uh, cost of capital and NPV. We apply in the formula to find IRR. So C is right. The internal rate of return can be obtained exactly using algebra, whereas graphical method provides only an approximate rate of IRR. No, what we use in algebra is an equation. The equation assumes it to be a straight line, which means we do an approximation. Algebra gives an approximation, right? So algebra doesn't give us an exact answer. Algebra doesn't give an exact answer. So B and C are the right answers. Option C. Option C. Option C. Next one. <clears throat> in histogram one common class width is 20 for analysis purposes analyst has set one class width is 16 and the frequency recorded is 72 to maintain the accuracy of histogram the uh, score that must be plotted is right so you you know in histogram we find something called frequency density what's the formula for frequency density frequency density equals to class width divided by common class width multiplied by frequency common class width multiplied by frequency other way around no must be common class width divided by class width into frequency in this case class width is 16 common class width is 20 multiplied by frequency 72 90 is the answer 90 is the answer <coughs> see if you see a description like this give the answer in whole number without decimals just type 90 only don't type any decimals the group of people have the following ages in years, median age of the group. Median age means you, you have to rearrange them in the ascending or descending order and then find the mid value. If I arrange them in the ascending order, 17 seems to be the lowest. 17. Then we have 19. Uh, 21. After 21, there is another 21. Then there's a 24, 26, 27, uh, 24, 26, 27, 31, 31, 32, 42. I'm, I'm missing some number. Let's check how many numbers we have. 3, 6, 9, 10. How many are here? 3, 6, 9, 10. Yeah, that's all the numbers are. So there are 10 numbers, which is going to be the median. Median will be 10 plus 1 by 2, that value. That is uh, 10 plus 1, 10 plus 1. Yeah, that is 5.5. 5 5.5th .5. 5 value. How do we get 5.5th value? That must be 5th value divided by uh, plus 6th value. 5th plus 6th divided by 2. 5th value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 24. 6th value is 26 by 2. That's 25. That's 25. Question number 7. Question number 7. A company analyzes its sales into different regions and summarizes the data in a pie chart. Sales from Northern Province was $300,000 and it was depicted by 40 degrees in a pie chart. What was the total sales of the company? You know, total degrees uh, in a pie chart is 360. <clears throat> so 300,000 is depicted by 40 degree. Divide, you will find how much is 1 degree multiplied by 360 to get the 
total sales of the company. Two million seven hundred thousand is the right answer. Let me highlight the answers for the previous questions also. Yeah. Question eight. The NPV of an investment is two hundred thirty dollar when the discount rate is five percentage. Twelve percentage is negative one sixty. We have five percentage uh, and twelve percentage. 12 percentage it's minus 160 5 percentage it is 230 so IRR will be lowest rate plus R2 minus R1 divided by V1 minus V2 230 minus minus 160 makes it plus 160 into V1 whatever the formula that you remember you can study those who study it under me you would remember this formula R1 R2 minus R1, V1 plus V1, V1 minus V2 into V1. Let's see what answer you get. 9.12. Do they mention anything about uh, the decimal points? Give it to two decimal places. Two decimal places, it must be 9.13 percentage. Because 1, 2, 8 has to be rounded to 1, 3. If you have entered 9.12 for this, you don't get marks. Question number 9. The regression uh, equation linking x and y is y equals 12x minus 400 which of the following is correct. Huh. Slope of the equation plotted on a graph is 12. You know in this format if you have y equals mx plus c format the coefficient of x gives you the slope. It gives a slope and this constant which is added to subtracted at the end gives us the intercept. Slope of the equation plotted is 12. Correct answer. If that is right, the other one has to be wrong. Slope of the equation. <clears throat> so that is wrong for sure. Right. With that itself, you can figure out the final answer. Look at the four options you have. You know if one is right, two cannot be right because they both are talking about slope. Right? See, this says one and two. Right? They can't be one and two correct at the same time. Therefore, B cannot be the right option. This also says one and two. C cannot be the option. D also says one and two. That means obviously A is going to be the answer. Anyway, we'll look at the other, other statements as well. The line cuts y axis at minus 400, correct? Intercept is minus 400, correct? So obviously the other one is wrong. So it has to be 1 and 3 only. Option A. Option A. Uh, yeah. Calculate the value of B in regression uh, B. B, uh, you will be given the formula B is n sigma xy. Let's start start with the bracket n sigma xy. n is 10, sigma xy is uh, 20,000 minus sigma x is 90 into sigma y is 1500 divided by divided by square root of n sigma x square 10,000 minus sigma x whole thing square 90 squared into uh, n sigma y squared into n sigma y squared n sigma y squared is oh wait to get uh, to find b you don't need this you don't need this just only only uh, square root of uh, that is for r only you need all that right this is uh, the formula is this n sigma x y minus sigma x into sigma y divided by square root of n sigma x squared minus sigma x whole thing square that's all b is that's all b is to get 1491.2 1491.2 correct two decimal point places shall we double check the answer uh, how do we get it uh, n sigma xy sigma xy is 20,000 minus sigma x to sigma y 19,500 divided by square root of n sigma x squared n is 10 sigma x squared is 1000 
minus 90 squared. Let's quickly check the answers I have shared with you. <clears throat> ED five C ninety. Let's see D. Next one is D. D. ED five C ninety. Then six one B two million seven hundred nine point one three. 25 is it B? Question number 6. B, correct, 25 years. Then uh, 2,709.13, correct. 91A, 34.21. Let's check. Uh, 91A, okay, 10th one. the formula I have given you uh, this is in B and sigma x y minus sigma x sigma y n sigma x squared minus sigma x causing squared is right. n sigma x y n into 20,000 Check your answers. Why are we getting a different answer? n sigma x y minus sigma x into sigma y divided by Oh, we don't have the square root. We don't have the square root. Okay. We don't have the square root. Sorry. That is for R where we have the square root. 34.21 is the right answer. They asked us to give it in two, two points. Two decimal. Sorry, I got confused with the equation for coefficient of correlation. B, there is no square root. Simply n sigma x y minus sigma x into sigma y divided by n sigma squared minus sigma x squared but you don't have to memorize this formula is given in the exam just check that and you know uh, substitute carefully i think it, <clears throat> i think it's better if i upload the questions 10 by 10 answers 10 by 10 so this is the answer for first 10 questions first 10 questions you can check them in the next uh, video i'll share the answers for the next step